Hi everybody, my name is Kevin Buckley. I'm a veteran retoucher. I've been in the game for over 10 years. I've started my own business working with some of the biggest brands of photographers out there. And today we've got Caleb Cool, a world renowned photographer. And in this episode, we're gonna be trying to answer the question, why hire a retoucher? And in this series, we're gonna be going over the art direction, the retouching, and the collaboration between a retoucher and a photographer. So you get to see all of these things, all the processes you need to know to make these images yourself. All right, let's go. Hey, Kevin. How's it going? Good, good. How you doing, Neil? I'm doing well, man. Um, uh, I, I started to do this this thing where I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of feedback from fellow photographers and just people in my community. And one of the questions that kept coming up was, uh, why use a retoucher or do I use a retoucher in general? Um, so I just want to kind of go over that with you. But I mean, first off, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Give us a little bit about your background and uh, yeah, how you got into this whole thing. Okay, yeah, so I mean, background, background goes way back. So uh, I uh, started drawing when I was about 11, 12, drawing with colored pencils, as you imagine, that's Dungeons, Dragons, posters, dragons, and warriors. Nice. And I started compositing. I started taking a warrior from one, I started taking the dragon from another and putting them together and trying to make them look as realistic as possible for Dungeons and Dragons. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. It's actually crazy. Like one of my teachers picked up one of my drawings and stopped the whole class. I think it was like an English class. And like, yeah, had this long speech on like how nice it was and whatever. So I didn't have a lot of things going on at the time. So I was like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to go with this. And so yeah. I kept going in that direction. So I ended mm -hmm. up going with like pastels and then oil paints. And then I ended up going to college for a drawing and painting. And, um, and then at the end of college, my parents were like, of course, you know, probably need to do something to get a job. <laughs> so I took a Photoshop class and ended up really enjoying it. And it was an easy switch. It was a switch from basically painting to digital. And I was doing basically the same thing. I was just compositing different elements and trying to make it look as new as, as possible. So like yeah. messing with perspective and light and color and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So it translated quite nicely. The career that i'm in now actually that's amazing dude yeah your stuff uh, it's just i mean every time i look at it, i'm like hey dude you have a great eye and uh i just appreciate the work that you do so um Thank you so much. my question I, that question i have for you was uh why do you use retoucher um i mean i'm a retoucher and you know a lot of photographers out there this is one question i get you know hey why, why would i pay someone to you know retouch the stuff when i can do it myself um so my guess my question is for you why use retoucher and like, what do you feel you bring to the overall project? And, and what is your value to, uh, say, you know, a, a, a photo campaign? Okay. So the, the first way to answer that is that a photographer wears about 20 different hats. I mean, you know, you go on set, you've got to be watching for everything. You've got to watch the way the talent interacts and how the, and the, how the talents are dressed and the hair and makeup and, and, you yep. know, the producer and, and all the in sourcing a car and, Text sure. out. So like you've got to do all this stuff. So one of the things that the retoucher can do is it can take one more hat off your head. And it's a big hat, you know, um, mm -hmm. for these kind of productions and, and automotive retouching, the retouching can go on for the next month. You know, you could actually yeah. shoot two days. And I could be retouching it for a whole month. So it does take that extra hat off your head. Now, what I can offer also is the expertise, um, all the hours of work putting in to become an expert. I can I can take that off you as well and then do that and then add a little bit extra because it's hard to be an expert in everything. Yeah. So, you know, being a photographer is one thing, but like creating the correct shadow and like looking at the perspective to get that shadow just right. You know, and knowing the shadow is made up of like a core shadow and an ambient shadow and a contact shadow, mm -hmm. you know, doing all that kind of stuff, you know, getting right. the color right for it. It's it's a tough thing to do. It takes some art, yeah. it takes some time and expertise. And that's one thing that, that you don't necessarily have to do. I've worked with actually yeah. great, you know, super famous photographers and they could retouch too, you know, they can mm -hmm. do their own stuff, but... Um, a lot of times they would just miss little things because they're not doing it all the time. You know? Yeah. It's not that they don't know how to do it or they can't do it. It's just that, yeah. you know, it's not their main thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think one thing I've noticed, um, even 
doing a lot of my own retouching work over the years, uh, as I've started to shoot, you know, bigger campaigns and and the demand for assets within those campaigns, you know, sometimes you'll have, oh, we have 40 images that they get turned over, you know. So I'm doing the shooting and I'm doing the the retouching on top of it. It's dude, man, that the hour, like the, just the sheer amount of manpower that it takes to to churn through that stuff is is that can be astronomical. And then that takes us as photographers away from the things that we really really need to be focusing on, which is, you know, writing treatments, going out there, you know, hustling, um, you know, churning up business, uh, you know, just getting work uh, and doing tests and all that stuff. So, um, you know, from my perspective, like, I totally get it. I don't think I got it as much when I was a little bit younger. I was like, you know, I can do this. I can do this. I can do everything, you know, but you're totally right, man. It's, it's, and, and especially with someone like you, like you, you know, you made note of uh, the, the shadow details and all that stuff. A lot of stuff that uh, that stuff takes years to develop. I mean, I, I have a little bit of a background in retouching, so I understand it, but not nearly to the extent that I'm sure you do. And, uh, that stuff just isn't, it, it just, it's, it takes time to develop. And so, um, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate you speaking to that. Um, another question I had for you, um, just, just give us a breakdown. Like what is your process from, from the first initial email, you know, the whole bidding process, the, uh, you know, from delivering the files, like just, Kind of walk us through that whole process. Okay. Okay. So generally, um, I'll get a call or I'll get emails from photographers or agencies, you know, kind of saying, okay, we want to bring you in on a project. Well, we've got this project coming up. We want to get an estimate or a bid from you. And so that's usually how it'll start. And we'll have discussions back and forth about how many images, um, what kind of images. Are they going to be majors, minors? Or are they going to be just freestyle and held images? And, uh, and then, so from there, I can usually get a cost analysis of how many hours and how much time it's going to take to go ahead and, and, and composite these images or just do cleanup retouching, depending on, mm -hmm. you know, what the image is. Sure. So, so that's how it usually starts. Um, it's definitely some back and forth in, 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 on that end of it. Once the projects are awarded and you get the project, then the photographer, of course, goes out, shoots it and generally i'll get all uh, images back at my office now sometimes if it's a tight deadline i'll go ahead and work on set so i'll work in the back of the trailer um get to know the the makeup and hairstylist very well because we're <laughs> of course stuck back there all right uh tight tight quarters dude yeah <laughs> yeah so uh um so anyway um i'll retouch back there if it's really tight because then the photographer can go ahead and give me the info i need to get started right away the art director's right there that needs questions mm -hmm. right away so we can just you know hit the ground running and get it out yeah that's a huge that's a huge asset oh yeah 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 it's it's great and deadlines are crazy tight almost all the time now they're crazy it's insane it's absolutely insane i like half the time i'm like are you guys are you guys serious are you, are you real, really <laughs> i don't think i don't think they understand like you know what it takes to to man to, to turn this stuff out dude it's 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 absolutely ridiculous sometimes yeah yeah so so from there you know i get the files taken back in my office and i'll start basically triaging what needs to get done first set up a schedule um you know breakout excel it's not the most artistic thing you're going to do, but uh, you, know, you got to do it. You got to stay on schedule. You got to stay on budget. So, you know, you yeah. got to that out, get thumbnails going. So, you know what needs to be done where. Now, a lot of the jobs I get too are so big that I can't handle it all myself. So, some of the stuff's going to go out to freelancers. That's less artistic, you know, that 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 I know they can handle. And some, some of my freelancers are good at one thing, not so hot at the other. So, you know, I pick and choose where stuff goes and how things get done. And... For the timelines, you just have to. It's just I'd yeah. love to do it all myself, but it's just not possible. Yeah, um, and so it goes out to them, comes back, and generally, what I'd like to do is I like to have a pre-round. So before round one goes out, I I do what's called a pre-round, and that's me going back and forth with the photographer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can have two, three, even four pre-rounds before we get it to round one. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so then I uh, do round one, send it out to the agency and the photographer at the same time. You know, then they, they have a chance to make comments as well as the photographer. Uh, it goes back and forth for rounds one, two, three, sometimes four, and uh, that'll be about it. And I will um, usually um, give them flattened files, sometimes layered files for finals. Uh, almost <laughs> everything's now done on Dropbox or uploaded to your FTP, so... Uh, not much in see. Yeah, not much in, in person. And um, and I can 
can't even remember the last time somebody asked me for proofs. So that's that's long gone. You don't have you don't have any proofs for stuff, but uh, that's, that's years ago. Okay. Do you have uh, speaking of layered files? Do you run into uh, is there any like proprietary to that? Do you do you feel do you ever feel weird about delivering over like your layered work or what is your your thought on that just in general? Um, for simplicity. For for simplicity, I like to develop. I I like to deliver tips unless something is requested. Like sometimes they'll like keep the car in a layer so we can move it around, so the car in the shadow will be on layers that you can move around. But generally, if there's nothing that needs to be moved, um, a tip is often better because a lot of these files they could be thirty thousand pixels long side. Um, the shelf of some of them are eight gigs, nine gigs. Yeah. I mean, right. just to open them. It matches mm -hmm. out some of the computers in the agencies. So they run into trouble. So then I start getting requests, you know, like, can you send this flattened tips? Can you send this layered? Can you send this a JPEG? Mm -hmm. um, but generally, you know, a TIFF is going to be the way to go. Even a layered TIFF, you know, a semi-flat TIFF. And mm -hmm. I mean, if it's that big too, I can't give you a full risk file. because I need to be flattening it as I go, you know, yeah. that I don't think I'll use again and saving different versions. So... You know, so I can use my computer. So it's not just like, yeah. you know, spinning ball, <laughs> spinning ball the whole time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you don't have like, what it was it, 60 grand to drop on the new Mac? Is that what it is? Or something like that? Something ridiculous? Yeah. I think when you can get a new maxed out Mac, you could probably not flatten anything at that point. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, man. It still gets, it still gets pretty, <laughs> pretty demanding on those files. So. Yeah, and you're just not going to want all that stuff. It's just a mess. Because, yeah. like, when, when you have to go through the file later, if there's a thousand layers or if there's, you know, three, four hundred <laughs> layers, you know, it just takes, it, I mean, it can take you a half hour just to go through the file just to figure out what's where. Right. right. You know? So, <laughs> at a certain point, yeah, you got to start flattening down. And I know that goes against all the online tutorials where it's like non destructive, non destructive. But, like, you, but that's the information we need, man. Let's, let's, let's cut the BS. Let's, let's be real. Like, this is the industry. Let's talk about what, like, what is practical and all, you know, it's like, I see those things too. And I'm like, man, that's just, that's not the way it really is. So I'm, I'm even glad that you're making, you know, note of that too. No, no, it really isn't. And like smart objects, I use them occasionally too when I need to do a blur or something. But like smart objects take a ton of system resources. So you can't be throwing everything on a smart object either. And I know they yeah. recommend that as well, but that's right. to work in the real world. And I imagine like with your experience, a lot of that, you know, you, you know when it's appropriate to use those things and when you know it's not appropriate to use those things. Sometimes it's okay to have to flatten a few layers. Um, I know for myself, sometimes I'm like, ah, if I build out a background and, you know, I don't keep every single element of every rock that I retouch, you know, have all those layers. It's like, I'll just bake it, you know, flatten it. Let's move on, you know, because, you know, the likelihood of you going back to that is little to none. And even if you have to go back to it, you just grab the original file anyway. So, yeah, the, the pro tip on that is just to save versions that you're working on. So you can, you, can, you can save that version and then flatten all that stuff down and save a new version. Save it an A and then a B and then a C. And, th and that way you can go back if you absolutely need to. The chances of, the chance of you going back are, are pretty slim, I think, yeah. of the longer you reach. You know. Hey, if you enjoyed the video thus far, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, the subscribe, the notification bell. That way you'll know when the next episode comes out. So in this episode, we went over why hire a retoucher, that question. And I think we did a really good job of answering it. You got introductions of who we are and the processes of how we work with photographers and agencies, the deadlines that are crazy, and some of the other image file processes, how we save, export, all that good stuff. Now in the next episode, we're gonna be going over image selection. So we're gonna have bridge open, we're gonna be going through the hard drive to see which images we should select and move forward with so we can show you the retouching and the art direction that goes behind them. If the next video is up, go ahead and click it. If not, wait till it comes out and I hope to see you then. Thanks.